Hello fellow problem solvers. So they're going to be doing a problem from number theory. I invite you to try this cool problem out for a minimum of 20 minutes, ideally 45 to an hour, not more than two hours. If you'd like to go along with us, give it a go for the next 20 minutes. See what you find. And I like this problem a lot because it's like A divides something, B divides something, C divides something. These things are different and then show that at least one of them isn't prime and these numbers are pairwise distinct how am i supposed to show one of them isn't prime if like i don't if this was a plus one times c plus one maybe but like this what do i do this is why i love the problem because you're like oh my god what do i do here well there is something you can do and for me this is I'm trying to see, okay, I have A divide something, B divide something. They have a C in common. Can I combine the two? Because if A and B are both prime, like we're starting off by assuming all of these numbers are prime and we want to reach a contradiction. So if all of them are prime, then A and B are relatively prime. And now can I sort of combine these two conditions? And I invite you here to pause for 10 minutes and ask yourself, figure out how you can combine these two and maybe all these three conditions. Pause now. Here's what you can do. So from A divides B plus C plus BC, B divides A plus C plus AC. The problem is these two things are not the same. If A divides X and B divides X, we could have A times B divides X, which is stronger. So how can I make this same? Well, the answer is I can put in a plus a plus a times c. A still divides this. And I can put here a plus, so I have an a plus c plus a c. I have a plus b plus b c. These things are still true. And then I'll have a b divides this thing. But I can also do the similar. I also want to see. I also want C to be in the party, you know? Well, why do I want C to be in the party? Because if I have A times B times C divides something, and that something is going to be of degree 2, I know A times B times C is of degree 3. They're primes. Um, I can do some a lot more with that. So what am I going to do? I'm going to add plus AB and plus AB, and I'll have C divides a plus b plus a b and i can also add it divides this plus c plus c b plus c a all of these things are the same thing and so it follows because a b and c are prime and they're and because they're different they're relatively prime i can multiply them through and i'll get that a b c divides a plus b plus c plus a b plus a c plus b c now, let's call this division what it really is. An equality. There exists a k, that's a positive integer, such that this is true. Now, how are we going to finish this up? Well, without loss of generality, mind you, here we can also say let a be less than b is less than c. And now there are many ways to finish it up. One, I invite you here, you know, pause for 10, 20 minutes, finish up the problem. And there's many ways to finish it up the way I would like to finish it up. I hope you paused. Is to divide everything by ABC. And then I'll have K is equal to 1 over AB plus 1 over AC plus 1 over BC plus 1 over A plus 1 over B plus 1 over C. All right? I'll have this. And now, and K is at least 1. Can we even reach one is the question. So let's see what K can be. Now from A, B, C are prime, we know A is greater than or greater than or equal to two, B greater than or equal to three, C greater than or equal to five. And you can say, yeah, maybe, but maybe these three won't work. So maybe we have an even stronger. No, I think this is enough. This is enough. Why go for something stronger? Let's see if, the, let's see if this is enough. Then from here, we would have that one over C because C is greater than something, that means one over C is going to be less than or equal to one over five. 
1 over b is going to be less than or equal to 1 over 3. 1 over a is going to be less than or equal to 1 over 2. And so we finish up quite click. I, I actually don't know if we finish up or not. This is the first time I'm doing the problem. So what do we have here? 1 over a, 1 over b, 1 over c. I think we'll get to maybe we'll be, we'll be over a 1, but maybe we won't be able to reach a 1. So let's see what we have. We have now from this estimate, how can I also write this down? I can write this as 1 over a plus 1, 1 over b plus 1, times 1 over c plus 1, and then minus, minus 1, I think, and then minus 1 over a, b, c. That's how I can factor this out. How I know this, I think it's just at this point, I've seen it before and it's wrote, even though I haven't done anything like this in years, it, it just sticks. How can you can factor these things? And now this estimate turns into now this whole thing is going to be, so this is now less than, this is equal to K, and this is going to be less than a half plus one, which is three over two times, so one over five, which is six over five, plus one over three, which is four over three, minus one, minus one over ABC. Gonna have a bam, 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 two left, 12 over five minus one, minus one over ABC. And this thing is going to give us, this is, uh, what's it called? This is less than, actually no, this is greater than K. And this thing right here, this whole thing is then less than 12 over five minus one which is seven over five, which is less than two. So it means K has to be equal to one. And we can even use this estimate, mind you. Now, K, okay, now this whole thing is equal to one. Now we know that. And how, how can we actually go about solving this? Is there any other way except a case by case basis? I don't know. I don't know. Let's, let's actually think now if there's anything else we can do except a case by case. So can one of them be two? If one of them is two, the other two are odd, then this is going to be odd plus odd plus odd, which is odd. So actually A can't be two. We can actually have a better estimate. A is greater than or equal to three. Then B is greater than or equal to five. C greater than or equal to seven. Maybe that, does that change anything? If instead of three over two, I had a eight over seven, times six over five, times four over three. Is this I have a two, two, two. That's going to give me a 64 over 35. Actually, maybe this just ends the problem. This bigger estimate, if I'm not mistaken, I think this bigger estimate just destroys the problem and finishes it. Finish it. And because what we have is 64 over 35, that's what this whole thing is less than. So this minus one minus, it's less than this minus one, because this we can practically think this is zero. And this is going to be 65, 64 minus 35, it's going to be 29 over 35, which is less than one. We have K is less than one. In other words, there is no solution. Right, because k needs to be a positive integer here. So, wow, okay, we actually did need a better estimate. I thought k equals one would maybe be the thing we were going to look at, but it turns out, no, we just do this and we're done. And this finishes up our nice problem. And I wanted to show you this, the fact that these are primes and they're different, you wanna see if you can, and you have these divisibilities, they are dividing something. You want to see if you can have, if B divides some X, Q divides some Y, you want to see if you can have it so that both P and Q divide some Z, which is identical, because then you can have something stronger, right? If this is, if the divisor is bigger, then it's stronger. Uh, 
usually a rule of thumb if it's prime it may be stronger than if it's like a power of two but it doesn't matter this finishes up the problem and as always thanks for problem solving